a secret, a promise, and the greatest betrayal in mathematical history. One man unlocked a mystery that had baffled mathematicians for centuries, but he swore to take his secret to the grave. Another man, brilliant yet ruthless, found a way to claim the discovery as his own. The result? A betrayal so great, it changed the course of mathematics forever. This is the untold story of Tartaglia versus Cardano, a battle of intellect, deception, and the race to solve cubic equations. Before we reveal the truth, who do you think was right, Tartaglia or Cardano? Take a guess, and stick around to see if you're right. For centuries, the cubic equation remained an unbreakable code. Great minds had tried and failed. The Greeks knew it. The Arabs knew it. Even the finest Italian scholars, helpless. There is no general formula for the cubic. It is unsolvable. And so, the cubic remained an impossible riddle. A mathematical ghost haunting every scholar who dared to confront it. But in 16th century Italy, mathematics wasn't just about knowledge. It was about glory. Professors didn't just teach, they dueled in public, battling for intellectual dominance. Victory meant fame, wealth and patronage. Failure meant humiliation. And there was one problem that could make or break a mathematician's reputation, the cubic equation. And then, against all odds, one man solved it. But he wasn't about to share it. Not yet. Let me ask you this. If you had solved a problem no one else could, would you share your discovery, or guard it like a secret weapon? Tartaglia wasn't just any mathematician. He was self-taught from a poor background, and even his own voice had been taken from him. But now, he held the key to a mathematical mystery. Niccolò Tartaglia had done what generations of mathematicians had failed to achieve. He had unlocked the secret of the cubic equation, but there was just one problem. Revealing his secret too soon wasn't just foolish, it was dangerous. In Renaissance Italy, a mathematician who lost his advantage lost everything. Knowledge in 16th century Italy was power. Mathematicians didn't just share their discoveries, they used them as weapons in intellectual duels and Tartaglia knew that revealing his discovery could make him a target. And so Tartaglia made a decision he would keep his solution a secret. But secrets have a way of slipping through the cracks. Rumours began to spread a mystery mathematician had solved the cubic equation. And one man was already watching, waiting to make his move. And soon Tartaglia's secret wouldn't be his alone and his life would never be the same again. Let's say you held a secret that could make or break your career. Would you protect it or share it with the world? One letter, one decision, and the first step towards mathematics' greatest betrayal. Girolamo Cardano, one of the most famous scholars of the time, had heard the rumors. A mysterious mathematician had solved the cubic and he wanted the truth. Cardano wasn't just a mathematician, he was a physician, astrologer, and a master of persuasion. And now he set his sights on Tartaglia. He didn't just ask Tartaglia for his secret, he made Tartaglia believe that sharing it was the right move. For days, Tartaglia agonized over what to do. Tartaglia paced his study, torn between opportunity and fear. A scholar like Cardano could elevate his work or steal it forever. Finally, he made his choice. He agreed to meet Cardano under one condition. Tartaglia swore Cardano to secrecy. This was a matter of trust, a sacred bond between mathematicians. And Cardano, he agreed, but promises are just words. And the moment Cardano saw the solution, everything changed. At first he kept his word, he held on to the secret, but then something unexpected happened. Enter Lodovico Ferrari, Cardano's most talented student. When he saw Tartaglia's method, he saw something more, a way to go even further. With Tartaglia's discovery as their foundation, Cardano and Ferrari found a way to expand the method, to solve even more complex cubic equations. Ferrari pushed Cardano to break his promise. 
With their new refinements, he argued, the discovery no longer belonged to Tartaglia alone. But would Cardano dare betray the man who had trusted him? And then Cardano made his move. In 1545, Cardano published Ars Magna, one of the greatest mathematical books ever written. And inside, the secret method Tartaglia had sworn him to keep, his method, his secret, published for the world to see. Tartaglia had been betrayed, but he wasn't about to let this betrayal go unanswered. He would turn this mathematical rivalry into a battle for legacy. Do you think Cardano was justified in publishing the method since he and Ferrari improved it? Or did he betray Tartaglia? Betrayed, humiliated, furious, Tartaglia wasn't about to stay silent. Cardano had broken his promise, and now the world would know. Tartaglia wrote scathing letters accusing Cardano of theft. He called him a fraud, a liar, a man with no honor. And soon, the entire academic world was watching. And how did Cardano respond? He didn't, not a single word. Cardano had already won. Ars Magna was published, his name cemented in history. Why would he engage in a petty academic fight? Tartaglia's rage grew, but his influence faded. Cardano had the backing of the elite. Tartaglia, he was just an outsider screaming into the void, but Cardano had a secret weapon, his student Lodovico Ferrari. And Ferrari didn't just want to defend Cardano, he wanted to destroy Tartaglia. He challenged Tartaglia to a public mathematical showdown, the ultimate test of knowledge. Tartaglia had no choice, he had to accept. And so, in 1548, the two men faced off in a mathematical duel. The stakes, reputation, legacy, everything. For days they battled, solving problems on the spot. But this time, Tartaglia was outmatched. Ferrari had mastered the cubic, and he humiliated Tartaglia in front of the world. It was over. Tartaglia had lost not just the duel, but his place in mathematical history. Today, we remember Cardano's name. His book, Ars Magna, became a cornerstone of algebra. And Tartaglia? His contribution was overshadowed. His name a footnote in the very history he helped shape. So, was Cardano a visionary or a thief? Was Tartaglia a tragic hero or simply too cautious? You decide. Years passed. The mathematical war faded, but its scars remained. Tartaglia would never forgive Cardano. But in the end, it didn't matter. His name was already lost in history. And Cardano? He moved on. He had more battles to fight, more ideas to chase. The betrayal that had defined Tartaglia was just another chapter in Cardano's story. But here's the irony. In the end, Tartaglia and Cardano both won. Tartaglia may have discovered the method, but without Cardano, would the world have known? Ars Magna became the foundation for modern algebra, and today, the cubic formula is still called Tartaglia's method. So maybe, mathematics isn't about who wins or loses, it's about ideas, surviving far beyond the people who first discovered them. Because in the end, numbers don't care about rivalries. Now, it's your turn to be the judge. Who was the true genius of this story? Was Cardano justified in publishing the method? Or did Tartaglia deserve full credit? One thing's for sure, mathematics has never been just numbers, and neither have the people who shaped it.